So it's six o'clock and uh, because we have so many wonderful presentations tonight and I wanna make sure we have plenty of time to get to all of your presentations, uh, I think we should get started. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for uh, the annual Dutchess County Conservation Advisory Committee and uh, Environmental Roundtable. We're very excited to have you all here tonight and to hear from many of you throughout this evening. This is our agenda for the evening. Um, we will start with some quick uh, introductions, housekeeping, types of items. Uh, we're going to provide you a little bit, bit of an overview of what CCE Duchess um, has been working on and the uh, tools and resources that we can provide conservation advisory councils and the environmental management council, um, as well as some of your other municipal boards uh, in your communities. And then we're going to jump into the meat and potatoes of the meeting, which is the presentations from you all on what you all have been working on over the past year, what your goals for 2022 are, um, and some of the challenges that you face, but more importantly, some of the successes that you all have recently had. Um, so with that all in mind, I'm Carolyn Clocker. I am the Environment and Energy Program Leader at Cornell Cooperative Extension, Dutchess County. I'm joined tonight from Cornell Cooperative Extension by Sean Carroll and Michelle Gluck, uh, educators in our Environment and uh, Energy Program at Cornell Cooperative Extension. Uh, and you'll be hearing about some of the projects they work on tonight and probably hearing them at various points uh, throughout the evening as well too. Perfect. Oh, and if you have any tech issues uh, throughout the evening today, uh, you can get in touch with Sean Carroll via the chat. Um, if you use the... Uh, if you go into the chat function, you'll see in uh, next to two that you can select a particular participant that you can send a direct message to. So you can direct message him that. Um, if you're having problems even accessing the chat, his email is on the screen. It's smc427 at cornell.edu. You can also email him if you're running into any uh, technical issues while using uh, Zoom this evening. All right, and, and then one final kind of housekeeping thing before we get started, um, as you all, well, for any of you who have been to the round table in person, you know, pre-2020, pre, uh, um, or any of our events in, in person, you know that we always uh, end the evening with asking you all to fill an evaluation form. And in fact, we usually stand in front of the doors and don't let you leave <laughs> until you've filled out the evaluation form. Clearly, we cannot do that while we're doing a remote meeting. Uh, but we are going to share a link to an online evaluation form at a couple different uh, times throughout the evening tonight. And I really encourage you to just click on that link open that tab so that you are ready to fill out the evaluation as soon as this evening's program's over. And I promise you the evaluation will probably take you three to four minutes tops, um, if that. Uh, so throughout the evening, Sean's going to be providing links in the chat box um, to both the evaluation form and resources that we're mentioning. Um, any URL or link that is on the slides, you will also get because we will uh, email you a copy of the slides um, in a couple days as a follow up to this uh, event. Um, so don't worry about frantically writing uh, links down in URLs down if you don't want to uh, take a look at it right away. But Sean's also going to be adding those to the chat. So if you want to take a quick peek later tonight, you can click on the links and access them. All right. <clears throat> so uh, thank you again for joining us. I'm going to tell you a little bit about Cornell Cooperative Extension Dutchess County, uh, the organization that we work for. Uh, Cornell Cooperative Extension Dutchess County is a subordinate governmental agency associated with Cornell University and its land grant mission uh, since 1869. We take the research of Cornell University and the other land grant universities across the United States and interpret that research for the public and provide research-based resources, tools, and education for both the residents and uh, municipalities of Dutchess County. 
Our mission is to provide quality educational programs that build strong, healthy youth, adults, families, and communities while enhancing the economic, social, agricultural, and natural resources of Dutchess County. We have four major program areas at Cornell Cooperative Extension in Dutchess County. Agriculture and horticulture is one of them, family and consumer education. These are uh, programs like our relatives as parents programs, um, financial literacy programs and more. We have 4-H youth development. You, many of you are probably familiar with seeing the 4-H youth uh, during the fair uh, with their livestock, but we also have um, outdoor ed programs and fashion clubs and a, a whole suite of uh, youth development uh, clubs and activities. And then our program, which is the Environment and Energy Program. The mission of the Environment and Energy Program is to empower individuals and municipal groups to expand their knowledge and actions to protect, restore, and enhance the environment of Dutchess County for future generations. Uh, we work to provide resources and programming to Dutchess County communities like yours <clears throat> and residents on a wide variety of topics. This includes GIS education and technical resources, flood resiliency, climate change, youth outdoor and STEM education, energy efficiency and renewables, watershed education and outreach, and much more. Uh, these programs also serve a wide variety of audiences, but often our main audience are local <coughs> municipalities. Our, our main audience uh, is the CACs, town boards and planning boards and uh, um, like this. I'm going to provide you with a brief overview of just a handful of our programs. Um, and we're gonna focus on the programs that provide resources to conservation advisory committees, as well as uh, some of our, uh, other colleagues who you work with in your municipality. Um, but please know that we have many other programs uh, that serve residents and youth and uh, other various audiences. And so if you're ever interested in learning more about any of those, please feel free to reach out to us. So we are funded, some of our, our work is funded by Dutchess County. And this is the work that we do to provide education on greenway principles and smart land use policy to your communities. This funding supports activities like tonight's Conservation Advisory Committee an EMC roundtable um, that we hold each year, as well as a few other trainings and workshops uh, and forums. So in, in addition to the roundtable this year, we will be organizing, uh, hosting once again, our GIS mapping training uh, that Sean uh, uh, facilitates with several partners, including Dutchess County Planning. Um, but also as part of our scope this year, we are gonna be providing support to the Dutchess County uh, planning department to host a series of renewable energy trainings uh, as part of the New York State Clean Energy Communities Program and the New York State Climate Smart Communities Program. You probably just recently received an email about this program uh, earlier this week or, or last week from, from Shelby. Uh, there's going to be four really fantastic training opportunities for your communities, one on clean energy and your comprehensive plan, one on an overview of the model solar energy law, another on the overview of the model battery energy storage system law. And then another, um, so those first three are gonna be done remote via Zoom. And then the fourth is gonna be, and that's gonna focus on battery energy storage for first responders. Uh, so if you'd like to learn more about each of those trainings, uh, as well as register, uh, that is on the, both the slide and is uh, in the chat. Uh, we'll take you to that page where you can learn more. Also, the Dutchess County Planning Department, in partnership with Cornell Cooperative Extension Dutchess County, was recently awarded a New York State DEC Hudson River Estuary Program Stewardship Grant to update Dutchess County's 2010 Natural Resource Inventory. So this update is going to take place uh, over the next two years, and it's going to include um, updating existing chapters and the development of new chapters and new content for the natural resource inventory. It's also going to include the development of a web platform for hosting the NRI 
Um, and it's going to include interactive web map applications and a GIS data portal for communities to use. So the project team is very interested in receiving input from uh, your communities on things like content to include in the NRI, um, learn more about how your communities are currently utilizing NRIs, um, and what capabilities should be included in this updated version of the natural resource inventory. So we're actually gonna be sending out a survey in probably about approximately a month's time to collect some of this information from you all, as well as many of your colleagues uh, in your community. Uh, so stay tuned for that. We'll use this EAC and EMC listserv, um, but also other means to make sure we get that out to, to you all. We also wanted to remind you of how we can support your communities through our work with the Cornell Cooperative Extension Climate Resilience Partnership. So this is an initiative of CCE Columbia Green, Dunchess, Rensselaer, Rockland, and Ulster counties in partnership with the DEC Hudson River Estuary Program and the New York uh, State Water Resource Institute at Cornell University. <clears throat> and this project supports our work to provide technical assistance to you all and support your communities to complete adaptation actions in the Climate Smart Communities Certification Program. Um, so in addition to this funding source that we have to support you all uh, in the Climate Smart Communities Program, we also had an opportunity to participate in the Partners for Climate Action Local Champions Pilot Program. Um, if your program brings together a cohort of individuals representing communities uh, from Duchess, Ulster, Columbia, and Green that are interested in really taking their um, first solid steps uh, in pursuing the New York State Climate Smart Communities Certification Program. Um, it, this program, it works to provide a foundation so that a community um, can really go the distance with meaningful climate work uh, through um, having uh, inspiring guest speakers, expert technical assistance, peer-to-peer -peer learning, and much more. Um, the goal of the program is to essentially help a community create a roadmap to achieving bronze certification in the Climate Smart Communities Program. Uh, so again, we worked with uh, Partners for Climate Action to pilot that project last year, and they're going to be repeating the program and having a brand new cohort in 2022. So if you're interested, I highly encourage you to take a look at their website, um, the URL that's listed here and in the chat. You'll find more information about the program and information on how to apply, and they're accepting applications until May 2nd for the 2022 uh, cohort. <clears throat> and finally, before we move on, uh, we just wanted to remind you about some of the resources that are available to you all. Uh, if you are a Dutchess County Conservation Advisory Committee, Conservation Board, or an Environmental Management Council member, and you're not currently on our CAC and EMC listserv, please let us know. Uh, this is how we, we uh, get information out to you all about opportunities like this Local Champions Program and uh, our other funding that allows us to provide you all technical support at no cost. Um, but it's also other ways for us to get you information from our partners like uh, the Dutchess Land Conservancy and some really amazing volunteer opportunities that they have upcoming, uh, as well as information from the uh, Dutchess County uh, Planning Department and, and a host of uh, other uh, local nonprofits and agencies in the uh, county who are here to support you. Uh, so if for some reason you are not yet on that list, please get in touch with Andrea uh, at the email on the screen and she will make sure that you are listed. Now, if you shared your email address or the chair of your CAC shared your email address as part of that annual report and directory form, you're covered. We will be updating the full list in the next two weeks, uh, utilizing all of that information that you all recently shared with us. Also, as part of our work with the Dutchess County Planning Department, the Environment and Energy Program maintains a table of Dutchess County environmental ordinances. Um, we sometimes refer to this as the environmental ordinance matrix. Uh, so this is a resource that we maintain uh, for you all as well as the county so that uh, you can keep up to date on the ordinances in your communities, but also in other communities throughout the county. Um, it's a really great 
ordinance to kind of utilize when you're thinking about updating your codes and ordinances, because then you can take a look at what other communities have done and possibly use uh, their model, their ordinance or code as a, a model for your own community. Um, so the last time that this was updated was at the end of 2021 and can be found on our website at the link uh, provided both on this uh, page as well as in the chat box. Um, and we uh, periodically throughout the year reach out to you as well as to others in your community to keep that up to date. So look for future emails, um, especially if anything has been has changed recently or um, is being discussed in your community, we would love to hear about that so we can make sure this resource stays up to date. And then finally, um, in pre for those of you who have attended multiple roundtables, um, you know, in years past, we used to have um, a, a presentation topic and a brief presentation from a guest speaker, like a keynote speaker. Um, <clears throat> And we also used to do this presentation on the roles and responsibilities of conservation advisory committees and environmental management councils. It's kind of a quick overview of the New York State enacting legislation um, that forms CACs, CBs, and on the EMC, um, as well as some ideas of uh, what uh, CAC and the EMC can be and should be working on uh, in their community. Uh, because uh, we have so many CACs in our county participating in this uh, event every year. We've had to kind of remove items from that overall agenda so that we don't go over time. Uh, and so last year, one of our uh, colleagues who used to work with us, Danielle Salisbury, uh, made uh, a video of that portion of the presentation so that you all have access to that information uh, year round. It's hosted on our website at that URL uh, that's on both the um, the slide and in the chat box. Um, so feel free to take a look at it uh, at, at any time. If after, especially if you're a newer member to either the CAC or EMC, after you take a look at that and you have more questions, please reach out to our staff. That's what we're here for. We love helping um, CACs who are just getting started or new CACs better understand their roles and responsibilities. And we would uh, be happy to have um, a call with you and, and talk to you more about that and answer any questions that you might have. All right. So that was a really fast rapid fire overview of just some of the programs and resources that we can provide to your communities um, and to your committees. If you're interested in learning more, I highly encourage you um, to take a look at our website there. You'll all also find information not only about those programs, but programs like our No Child Left Inside Workforce Development Program, our Residential Energy um, Education and Outreach Programs, and much more. But also, please don't hesitate to reach out to any one of us. Um, this is a, a current snapshot of the Environment and Energy team. We're in the process of doing a full search to fill our environmental educator and NCLI program manager position. So you'll see a new picture up there soon. <clears throat> um, but yeah, our contact information is on that slide. We love hearing from you all. Uh, so please don't hesitate to, to get in touch with us uh, if you have questions or wanna talk more about any of our other programs as well. All right, so let's move on to the highlight of this evening. Um, unless anyone has any quick uh, questions uh, that they want to ask, um, feel free to drop them in the chat or uh, raise your hand. But otherwise, I think we're going to move on to the, the real reason why we're all here tonight, <laughs> which is to hear from all of you. Um, so at this point in, in our agenda, we're going to uh, hear presentations from each of the conservation advisory uh, committees as well as the Environmental Management Council and um, the Dutchess County Planning Department. Uh, each community is limited uh, to uh, five minutes uh, because there's, and I know that's gonna be hard and I appreciate and understand that that's gonna be hard because I've already taken a look at all of your annual reports and there's such a, so much great work that you all have been doing um, over the past year, um, but in order to, Make sure we have enough time to hear from everyone tonight. Please keep yourself to five minutes. 
Um, the order of presentations and pre presenters has been predetermined. Um, I emailed uh, the present presenters who had previously identified themselves at least uh, yesterday with some information on who, who was going in what order um, <clears throat> and can give you a kind of idea of what the slides uh, look like for your community. Um, and that brings me to my next point. There is a slide for each community. I do recognize that there is a lot of content on those slides. So I highly encourage you all to just glance up at the slides, but listen to the presenter, share a lot of the information that's on there. Um, but we put all that information on the slide so, because it's a way for us to easily share each of the community's annual reports with you all prior to this meeting. Uh, because as I mentioned, you will get a copy of all of these slides, um, at which point, um, if you heard something uh, that uh, Mung shared from the town of LaGrange and you want to take a closer look and find more details, all of that information will be available to you and accessible to you. Um, if, uh, if there is time, if a community does not take its full five minutes, so if they have a minute or more left in their time slot, we can take some questions from the audience. Feel free to use the raise hand function in Zoom or type your question in the chat and one of the Cornell Cooperative Extension staff who are serving as moderators tonight uh, can make sure that question gets asked. What usually happens though, is there often isn't time left. And so I highly encourage people again to put that question in the chat and then we'll make sure to come back to it when we get to the uh, question and answer session at the end of the evening and the discussion uh, portion. Or you can just hold on to the question until that time. All right, so, oh, there's also for presenters, this is kind of what your little timer is gonna look like at the bottom of the screen. Um, hopefully it works this year. I know last year it didn't. If, if for some reason it doesn't work, I am going to be frantically typing um, messages in the chat directly to presenters so that you know approximately how much time you have left and when I'm about to cut you off, all right? And just as a reminder to everyone else, uh, it's very important that you please stay muted during uh, your colleagues' presentations so that we can hear them all and we don't end up having um, any uh, uh, sound and, and feedback types of things going on. All right, so we're gonna kick off this evening starting with a presentation from uh, Brad Barclay of the Dutchess County Planning Department. Are you ready, Brad? I am, can you hear me? Yes, we can and take it away. Great. Um, so the main things I wanted to talk about was the, really the 2022 projects. Um, we're finally going to get started with the uh, CAPI program, which is uh, Dutchess County and nine other municipalities working on government greenhouse gas inventories and climate action plans, uh, working with uh, CCEDC, uh, um, Hudson Valley Regional Council, and ICLE, which is Local Governments for Sustainability. Uh, it's facilitated workshops to create the inventories of emissions uh, emitted by uh, governmental operations for each municipality, and then develop a climate action plan based on those inventories, which prioritize the best way to reduce those emissions, save energy and money. Um, again, this was a uh, consolidated funding application um, from the state, which we've just been working through the contract on that. Um, I do have a last meeting with Pleasant Valley Town Board on Monday night, just to get them to approve the agreement. And then we should be good to start in June. Um, as Carolyn talked about, um, we're partnering with CCE on a clean energy communities training sessions. These are NYSERDA trainers coming to speak about uh, clean energy for your compre and your comprehensive plan, an overview of the model solar energy law, an overview of the model battery energy storage system law, and then a battery energy storage for first responders training. Um, all of these trains, because like I said, they have NYSERDA trainers. Um, again, NYSERDA has really been tasked with pushing the whole uh, state energy program to get to renewables as quickly as possible and to lower emissions. Um, part of that is getting more solar energy on the online. And also these battery storage systems that you're starting to hear about 
um, being developed. Uh, they just put out a new um, offering for um, basically battery storages to be attached to the overall electric grid to improve reliability on the grid and to allow more renewables to be put into the grid. So you're gonna be seeing more of these battery storage systems. And we do need to have the first responders involved because as opposed to uh, the solar arrays, which mostly it's uh, visual impacts or um, whether it's taking up agricultural soils or requires clearing. Um, in this case, the battery storage systems can actually blow up. So we need to have the first responders involved. Um, the Partnership for Manageable Growth is one of my favorite uh, programs from the county. Uh, we'll pay up to half the cost of either purchasing an easement on farm or uh, helping acquire an open space that's important, has important natural characteristics. The one that we're gonna finish this uh, spring is actually purchase of 155 acre uh, seven wells property in Dover, which we can then combine with the Stone Birch property and really have just a, a fabulous um, uh, area down there. Uh, we did award five more projects this year as part of PMG uh, for a total of two and about 2.25 million in funding. And we're looking to solicit for another round of projects uh, later this year. As Carolyn said, the NRI is uh, one of the big things that we're working on. And I know you're gonna hear more about this later. Another thing that's going on is we've just completed a 10 year local solid waste management plan. And that's um, there are opportunities for public comment if you're interested in that. Last thing I just wanted to say real quick was we're starting to work on the urban trail, which is north side of Poughkeepsie. It's gonna be interesting because it's gonna be really a 24 seven trail, which is lighting and security and, and very different um, concerns than our existing um, trail system. And the other thing is, if you haven't been on the Harlem Valley Rail Trail new section north of Millerton, it is amazing. And you should really get out on it. Um, the, because of the wetland complexes and stream complexes up there, they've had to put in a bunch of boardwalk sections. And the way that they did it to make it this uh, seamless trail is just amazing. So I hope I'm close, Carolyn. You are, you just hit your time. Uh, so for some reason, everyone, the timer, once again this year, even though I tested it out like 10 times throughout the day today, <laughs> it's just not working. Um, so if you are a presenter this evening, if you could please be sure that you have your chat box open before you- And I could see the little chats. Excellent, because I'll be sending you chats um, directly to you to just let you know how many minutes you have left. Um, so thank you, Brad. I appreciate that. Uh, next up, we have James Fredrickson from the Dutchess County Environmental Management Council presenting. James, are you ready? Do we have James on? There's James. James, you are not, you're still on mute. All right, should work now. Uh, there we good, go. good evening. Uh, I'm a, uh, Jim Fredrickson, I'm the new chairman of the Dutchess County Environmental Management Council. Uh, last year, we, we did uh, some interesting projects that we completed. We, we did do a draft resolution regarding the Dan's Camera Power Plant expansion, uh, which we submitted to the legislature. Uh, the state did deny the permit, but now Dan's Camera is appealing that decision. So we're gonna keep an eye on that. Uh, we have an ongoing effort to reduce the overuse of, of uh, road salt, and we're working with some municipalities to do some cost analysis of going from road salt to uh, brine to reduce their cost and the impact to the environment. Uh, for 2022, we uh, plan on helping uh, at taking an active role in the Dutchess County Natural Resource Inventory, so there'll be more on that later and continue our effort on reducing the overuse of road salt. Uh, one of the uh, things I'd like to see the County Environmental Management Council do is establish uh, better contacts and connections with the various 
CACs and CBs in the county. Uh, to that end, uh, those of you who are chairmen of your various uh, groups will be hearing from me via email soon. I, I'd like to get something together where we have a little more active uh, communication between us because you know the Fishkill Creek doesn't know when it crosses the border from one town into another. We're all breathing the same air and working on the same goals. So if we could work together a little bit, I think that would be uh, good to move some of these other things forward. Um, than that, that is pretty much my presentation, Carolyn. So, unless anybody has any questions. Yeah, there, there's about two minutes left if folks want to ask uh, questions of Jim or the Environmental Management Council. Any questions? Uh, you can put them in the chat or uh, you can raise your hand or if it doesn't get too crazy, you could unmute yourself and we can see how that goes. <laughs> James, this is Dieter Lucas from LaGrange. Just wondering with the road salt and the brine, so is that um, helping the groundwater from getting too salted? Yes, that's, that's one of the, uh, the main concerns with road salt is groundwater and stream pollution. I, I'm in the town of LaGrange also, Dieter. One of these days we need to get together. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, and just where I'm located, and the town, they do the best they can, but as they come around our cul-de-sac, they usually dump a five gallon bucket of salt right in front of my house next to the storm drain. Right. That ends up going into a storm drain that goes into the little stream at the end of the road, which ends up eventually into the Wappingers Creek. So, you know, whatever we can do to reduce that. I'm with you, definitely, uh, definitely get in touch. Okay, I will do that. Sure. And Curtis from the Stanford CAC also had a question involved involving uh, the brine says saying what's involved in changing over to brine um our expert is is uh vicky kelly on the uh switch over i know that the um the towns that have done it they have to get some new equipment for their trucks to handle the brine and a lot of it is computer uh controlled by the driver uh there is we are actually right now working on a cost analysis to uh, as an example of what it would cost to switch over to brine from the, uh, the pure road salt as an example that we can share with the uh, various towns and other municipalities. Yeah. Ellen, I, I see you have your hand up and I appreciate that, but we do need to now move on to the next presentation. Would you mind putting your um, question in the chat and then we can make sure we can come back to it uh, later on this evening. Thank you, Ellen, I appreciate it. All right, so with that, next up we have the town of Amenia and Michael Peake will be presenting on behalf of the town. Michael, are you ready? Okay. Here we go. I think I'm in the game, am I? Yep, you're there, yep. Right on, I gotta follow the big boys, all right. Uh, <laughs> hi everybody, uh, my name is Michael Peake. I'm CAC chair in the town of Amenia and I'm also the Climate Smart Task Force Coordinator. I have to start with a disclaimer. We haven't been as active as we would have liked over the past couple of years due to many factors, but primarily, um, you know, just the COVID related issues that everybody's been grappling with. Um, however, we were successful in tying up some loose ends uh, on our Climate Smart work in progress. And we had some very productive meetings toward the end of the year that have um, carried through nicely into this year. We've got a great group of people. We've got some good momentum right now, and I think we're gonna have a good year in uh, 2022. Mm -hmm. We were fortunate in the fall to connect with Eleanor Peck, who I'm sure some of you know from the Hudson Valley Regional Council. She gave us some uh, guidance and some insights into the Clean Energy Communities Program, which I know y'all are promoting as well. And uh, we've completed several high impact actions there. And we've got a defined pathway now to our first $5,000 grant, which we can really use since uh, we're not currently found, funded by the town uh, budget. So we're gonna try and drum up some of our own, uh, some of our own cash money. Uh, we're also working on an application for the local champions program that you guys talked about. 
uh, which we're excited about. And I think we're going to be able to make a pretty strong case for Amenia to be accepted into that program. Uh, anybody who has insights or advice that they'd be willing to share with us, we would welcome that. Um, we've got our annual Earth Day cleanup coming up uh, Saturday the 23rd. We're pulling together some information for a community solar program so we can do some outreach and education that day as well. And we're also working with the Amenia Garden Club, partnering with them on some projects to improve local parks and landscapes. Um, challenges, of course, there are always many. With regard to challenges, it uh, seems to me that um, in Amenia, we're often limited by a, a culture of compliance and a fear of litigation from developers and property owners. And uh, I kind of feel like the town can and should operate from a, from a stronger position when it comes to protecting natural resources and uh, planning for the future, more proactive and less reactive. Um, having said this, I think the tide is turning. There have been a number of personnel changes with the new year, and we're working to build stronger relationships with town board, planning board, zoning board, staff members. So uh, I am optimistic. Um, in addition to some large scale development projects that are in the works here, uh, the town's also looking at finally relocating its highway garage from a small parcel right in the heart of Wasaic to a site on Route 22 that should be much better suited to this use. We've already been asked for our input on a couple of matters related to that project, so I think there's an important role for us to play there, and we're looking forward to that. And um, the well, another thing that we're very excited about, the Amenia Town Board is concerned currently considering a proposal put forth by BQ Energy, who I know some of you know, to develop a solar field project on the site of the old Amenia landfill. And uh, if and when this project comes to fruition, this site will uh, represent a pretty amazing transition, basically from a, uh, a toxic Superfund site to a source of clean green energy. And this project was initiated by one of our members and so far has met very good response from the town board uh, and really just about everybody uh, who's heard about it. So we're excited about it and we're doing everything we can to advocate and support it. Uh, at the same time, I'd also be very interested to hear from other communities who've done something similar uh, with regard to their experiences. I under understand, for example, that uh, the folks at BQ uh, put together a successful project in Beacon and I think some other local region, regional uh, communities as well. Um, that's about it. Um, you know, it's going to be, I think, a really busy busy year for us. But I think we're we're positioned well to get a lot done. There's great energy in the group. Um, we're going to be advocating for adoption of a clean energy code. We're going to, uh, I think, try and get some of our folks in for some of that GIS training that you guys offer up, including uh, myself. Uh, and we're also talking about revisiting our uh, natural resource inventory. So it sounds like the timing there is good with folks looking at that um, at the county level as well. So uh, that's all I got. Thanks to everybody. I have to say uh, as excited as I am about what's in front of us. I'm always uh, I'm humbled by the great work that everybody else is doing. And it's uh, truly inspirational and uh, you know, gives me energy for sure to go back to the group and uh, and tackle uh, tackle all the challenges in front of us. So thanks to everybody. Thank you, Michael. Um, I mean, it used their five minutes, so we won't have time for questions right now. Um, but if you have any questions for Michael and the town of Aminia, please feel free to put them in the chat box um, and or hold on to them until we get towards the end of the evening. But up next, we have Sergey from the city of Beacon uh, presenting. All right. Good evening. Uh, Good evening. Everybody can hear? Yep. All right. Thank you. Um, glad to be taking part. So we have uh, we have several projects that we have completed or in the process of implementing, and um, um, in our broader vision is to, as some others have mentioned, to uh, to broaden our collaboration with other communities. Um, including working on a watershed protection, Fishkill Creek watershed protection, and on some other initiatives. But uh, uh, what we have done most recently, uh, we just, we're just we just launching a compost pilot 
the last two years, CAC and the broader sustainability uh, community worked together. We've worked, uh, we formed a working group, developed a pilot, um, presented to city council, got funding, and uh, it has two components, 100 uh, heavily subsidized uh, backyard bins. And uh, in two weeks, we're starting community drop-off um, uh, part of the pilot. Uh, there will be three different spots in a, in a city. Everybody can come and uh, drop their compost, including uh, the uh, kitchen scraps, including bones, diary. And uh, it's going to run for six months. We are doing surveys and collecting data to see how much uh, diversion we receive. Uh, we, uh, we get to uh, what type of people are participating uh, with the hope of expanding this pilot going forward. And it was a huge uh, volunteer undertaking. It's probably took like two, three hundred hours of volunteer time to pull it off um, and um, design the whole program. Um, and we're very thankful to the city of Beacon to actually helping this uh, happen. Um, we're looking to broaden in collaboration with the school district uh, because they are one of the biggest uh, landowners in Beacon and have you know huge properties that can be very beneficial uh, to greater sustainability goals, uh, stormwater management, pollinator pathways, um, participating in a compost program together. So we're starting to explore collaboration with the school district. And I think uh, it can help to achieve a lot what you know, otherwise we're limited to uh, with what the city owns or you know, how much we can convince businesses and people to do. Um, we started, uh, almost two years ago, clear plastic uh, collection program uh, on the tracks uh, that would take plastic bags and make uh, boards and benches out of them. So we operated three spots and then eventually uh, compressed to one uh, through the collaboration with, with Hudson Valley Brewery. And we have diverted hundreds and hundreds of pounds of clear plastic. Uh, it's kind of ongoing program and we're looking to expand it uh, and build uh, kind of a business component where other local businesses that generate a lot of plastic take part. And um, so we started working with industrial arts uh, that also has a lot of plastic that, you know, their containers and uh, the supplies come wrapped in. And uh, at that we're also looking to expand kind of uh, working with the business community and uh, there was some interest in a compost that we cannot accommodate within this uh, uh, municipal compost program. But um, for this year, we have a plan of trying to form a working group within the uh, food services businesses in Beacon and have them brainstorm about how they can collectively work on a compost. And then potentially we can do cost sharing through you know, uh, scheduling pickups with the same truck so that you know, we reduce emissions and costs associated with trucking. Um, we have finished uh, open space inventory and uh, last year and uh, uh, Sean was uh, very helpful and he was our guiding guide, um, guiding star so to speak and helped us implement the survey uh, it was very well received um, we will try to start working on a open space plans this year but you know, might take a little break it's a heavy undertaking um, and another thing area that we're very focused is mobility and accessibility, especially from the uh, uh, social um, environmental justice component and creating safe transportation for uh, for everybody in Beacon, but also especially for people from uh, underprivileged communities who do not have access to uh, cars. Uh, and uh, so we had meetings with Newberg about developing e-bike sharing program um, there is also uh, some something we're working on e-bike rebate program and uh, looking into uh, potential for infrastructure development and making biking safer in Beacon. Um, so in the next couple of years, we will try to implement some pilots. And this is joint group between work between CAC and Main Street Access Committee and uh, some you know, from other uh, groups. And um, um, that's your time, Sergey. All right. <laughs> that's your final page. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all of that. Um, and again, um, all of the information that all of you all shared in your annual report is included in these slides. And you can also make your annual report forms available to others. 
um, because there's too much to present in five minutes. You all are doing fantastic work. So thank you for sharing that. If you have questions for Sergey, feel free to put them in the chat or um, hold on to them until the end of this evening. But up next, we have Barb Mansell from the town of Clinton. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Barb. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Um, everybody's doing such great work. Um, our little town has um, started uh, really doing a couple of focuses. One is uh, the pollinator pathway, which we all became excited about when first seeing Susan's um, video back in uh, March, I think it was. And so uh, we started, we were approved by the town to have the Pollinator Pathway Project. One of our members, Maya, has been very instrumental in, in presenting to the town board and has a really, really good relationship uh, with the board. There's a lot of support. I do want to, before I get going, you had a question about uh, how terms, there is a question. We have, um, in our town, we have staggered two-year terms and then three to nine members at one time, just to answer that question if you want. Thank you for um, sharing that. So we had, we had 10 meetings were held. Um, we reviewed uh, seven planning board applications and we really, really do have a good relationship with the planning board and zoning board. They really do keep us in the loop. And we're finding that there's an increase in large properties being subdivided, but mostly into two lots uh, with the intention for um, to sell for buildable lots. They, um, and I see these properties are sort of, I don't know, 65 acres. And so the split is almost in half. So we're not too worried about having Clinton broken up into subdivisions. Um, let's see, we did put a page on the town of Clinton Duchess, uh, a page on the pollinator path today for the town of Clinton Duchess. Uh, of Dutchess County, They're, we aren't a town, so that's how we had to be listed that way, <laughs> um, a specific name town. Um, we did do a couple of outreaches uh, to at the Clinton Community Library at their book sale, which we're gonna be doing again uh, uh, in May. And there was also, we had a um, pathway and the um, table and about the Climate Smart Program, which I'll get into in a moment at the Democratic Committee Social in September. Oh, also back uh, when I started with CAC, I created these folders for educational environmental data and information to hand out. And the library now has also created totes for new members to new residents to um, uh, have that environmental information included. So in uh, April, 2021, I sort of designated the town of Clinton as clean energy community. And, um, Thanks to our then town board member, Mike Witten, with his efforts were really a major piece in this. Um, he created a task force and it, you know, and also Michael, of course, now is our, our uh, town board, or he's our supervisor, which is great. So he's, he's on the Climate Smart Task Force and we've got, there are 10 residents on there and three are from the CAC. Um, and so then the town board also continued the, um, supporting the community choice aggregation, which is where we're getting our electricity via solar. Um, also the, the highway department is looking into doing, using electric vehicles. Uh, let's see. So the best part about this is that we have these two big projects. There was a lot of interest and we grew from four members to eight and it's fabulous. I mean, we. We all work really, really well together. I, I love it. We have only two minutes. Okay, let me see. Uh, so we have, we have several education outreach programs about the pollinator pathway with the library. And, um, and there's, there's the, the climate part, climate smart task force is going to hold a green fair in May in Frenmark Park. And so they've been developing, there's a chap who's very excited about working on that. He's, doing brilliantly. The task force will try to achieve a bronze status this year. There's the road stream crossing an inventory management plan that uh, they're developing with Sean, uh, and also the Climate Smart, Climate Smart Resili Resiliency Planning 
school and they're going to continue uh, trying to build their cafes. And then I'm looking, if possible, for these environmental or these educational outreaches that we're doing. If anyone has like displays for vernal pools, I mean, it's a pet peeve, not a pet peeve, it's a, a, a love that I'd like to have people realize that, you know, vernal pools. And I guess I'm done. <laughs> yep, you're at time, but that's a great request. If anyone has displays on vernal pools or are thinking about creating a display, um, it's an opportunity to come together and um, uh, share resources. And, and um, it's also, oh, that's my timer. It's always a good time um, to remind you all as well, too, that we have um, many resources, handouts. Um, we do have some display boards at Cooperative Extension, our watershed display board um, and Energy One. There's, there's several and I'm forgetting them um, all. And maybe uh, Sean and Michelle can remind folks what they are um, in the chat. Uh, but you all are more than welcome to sign them out and use them for any of the events that you are doing. And we can get you copies of the various different types of uh, resources that we have um, available. Um, I know a lot of that hasn't been going on lately because there hasn't been as many community events. But as those things start picking back up again, I just wanted to remind you that um, that's available, like our septic flyers, our rain barrel worksheets. Uh, there, There's a slew of them. And Maybe sometime in the coming month, we can send you a, a list um, all of, of all of that information so that as you all are preparing for your community events, you can um, stop by and see what types of resources we might have available to share with you. All right, so next up is the town of Dover, but I am not sure if somebody is here to present for the town of Dover because nobody identified themselves as the presenter, either in the registration form or in responding to an email. So do we have a presenter from the town of Dover here tonight or someone who would like to present on behalf of your community? All right, well, the town of Dover has been doing some amazing work um, as well with CEC and Climate Smart Communities and, and, and a whole, uh, host more. Um, so their information will be in the, the slide presentation um, and we can get copies of their annual report. Um, and if you have any questions, you can reach out to their chair, Evan Van Hook, um, directly. But with that, I think we'll now move on to the town of East Fishkill and presenting for the town of East Fishkill tonight is Pete Barassi. So Pete, are you ready? I saw you in here earlier. Yeah. When do you do it? There you are. Now I can hear you. Okay. Fantastic. Take it away. Okay, good. Um, okay. Our uh, town of East Fishkill, uh, Brent Feldwig is the chairperson. Uh, he had a conflict. With, there's a family event this evening and he's not able to attend. So I'm here in his absence. Um, we, we have uh, currently six active members and one ad hoc member. The ad hoc member is a, a town employee who interacts for us with the town. And uh, that person does not vote uh, to avoid conflict of interest. So we have six members plus the, uh, the town employee that helps, that assists us. We, uh, we also uh, have one member who attends Dutchess County EMC meetings to keep good coordination between EMC and our town CAC. And that person happens to be me. So I do attend, I am a member of both the town of East Fishkill CAC and the Dutchess County EMC. Uh, one of the main things that our CAC does is uh, we review all um, applications for subdivisions and developments that come into the town. And uh, we review those uh, for environmental consistency and make our comments to the planning board. Uh, one that's active right now is AutoZone has a, uh, an application in to build a new store on uh, uh, Route uh, 82. And we reviewed that. We found several inadequacies with it. Uh, shared that with the planning board, 
and, uh, and hopefully that application is either going to be withdrawn or modified. So during the course of this year, we'll see how that works out. Uh, of course, we get involved with the EMC CAC roundtable meeting, and here we are. And uh, during the course of last year, we uh, we reviewed uh, the Dance Gamma power plant expansion plan and uh, wrote a statement of non-support. We thought that that was inappropriate. Uh, we wrote a statement of uh, non-support and uh, shared that with the town. The town ratified it and agreed with us, sent on that comment to the state DEC and the project was uh, disallowed. Uh, so uh, now it's, it's been appealed. So we'll see how that goes during the course of the year. Uh, for 2022, we are looking to uh, add uh, at least one member. Uh, we'd like to get up to, to seven members and uh, or eight with the ad hoc member. And, uh, and we have room for nine. So, so we'd like to start by getting one more. Um, a major activity that we'd like to, to support is the reestablishment of the Fishco Creek Watershed Association. Um, that was mentioned by uh, Sergey from Beacon. Uh, we've had discussions with them and we'd like other towns to get involved as well. Uh, that association existed during the, the early 2000s, put out a couple major documents in 2005, a, a management plan, which is like very extensive. And uh, we'd like to follow up to continue with that. And, and so in order to do that, we need cooperation from the other towns in the, uh, in the watershed, uh, specifically uh, towns like Unionville, Beekman, Fishkill. So we're trying to start with East Fishkill and Beacon, but we'd like to get the others involved as well. And uh, so, you know, during the course of the year, we'll continue with our activities with the Cooperative Extension with the Energy and Environment Committee, the EMC, and uh, and also the plan the planning board, and uh, and, and continue working on reestablishing uh, the Fishkill Creek Watershed Committee. Uh, we'll continue reviewing uh, development applications and get involved in other town activities such as uh, Arbor Day, a beautified town of East Fishkill, the Town Community Day, and. Uh, and we attend uh, appropriate planning board sessions. Now they're on Zoom. And so uh, to keep abreast of uh, you know, what's going on in the town in general and how the development plans proceed. Uh, that's it for now. That was like perfectly five minutes, Pete. <laughs> you must have rehearsed it. <laughs> I was Carolyn, just pressing stop. <laughs> just real quick to, to Pete. Hey, uh, Pete, I just sent you a... Uh, a direct message, but uh, Supervisor Dick Pearson from the town of Wappinger is very interested in um, being part of that conversation with on the Fishkill Creek uh, Watershed Group as well. So well, that's um, good news. Yeah, Thank so you. we should we should we should organize a call and then get that get that moving. Cool, great. Thank you. All right. So thank you, Pete, and the town of East Fishkill. Uh, next up, presenting this evening is Carrie Teed for the town of Hind Park. Hi everyone. Um, so 2021 has been the busiest year yet since I've started in 2013. So I feel like we, um, we got a lot accomplished uh, this past year. Um, we did our regular reviews to the planning board. This year, uh, last year, the zoning board asked for our help. Um, so we gave some, guidance to the zoning board. Um, our CAC is also our CSC, so we've just kind of combined them together. Um, so we, we had our regular meetings. We also participated in a, um, the farmer's market for Hyde Park. And um, with our, the funds that we have, our environmental funds, we did a, a LED light bulb giveaway during the farmer's market. Um, we started our natural resource inventory. We're currently still working on that. Uh, a climate vulnerability workshop. Uh, our um, One of our members re regularly participates into the Falk Hill Watershed Coalition group. Um, 
we've participated in several state programs, including the clean energy communities. Um, we created a non-town funded environmental fund. We um, performed a vehicle assessment for the town. We signed up the town and some of our members to community solar. Um, unfortunately, due to supply issues, we can't sign anybody else up, but uh, we're hoping to maybe get back with that this year. We've also partnered with Clean Air New York for air quality alerts. And we did a initial assessment for street light conversions to LED lights. Um, her successes is we, we submitted uh, for the bronze certification for climate smart communities. And we learned that we did achieve bronze. Um, the uh, the uh, planning board and the ZBA are, you know, have worked with us really well. Um, so we consider that a, a success. We got one new member this year. Unfortunately, we, um, we only have five members. So that's uh, one of our obstacles. We, we did a really big reach out last year and it just, it didn't pan out. And we really struggled trying to find new members um, or we'll find people who kind of hang out for a bit, go to a few meetings, but they don't, they don't sign up. Um, yeah, and I mentioned the, uh, the issues with community solar because of the supply chain. So we couldn't, we couldn't bring that any further. We got a completely new town board in 2022. So um, that's gonna be interesting to see what, what changes come for us. And so projects that we're gonna continue with, um, we hope to, of course, find new members. We would like to um, start to continue to pursue silver status for the Climate Smart Community programs. Um, we're continuing to support, provide support to the zoning board. We want to finish the NRI, which we're, we're almost there, and um, continuing to update uh, the CAC and the CSC web pages. And we also have a member who is doing uh, bike rodeos at some of the elementary schools. And I think that's about it. Great. So, Carrie, you still have a minute and a half left. So, does anyone have questions for the town of Hyde Park or for Carrie on what they're working on? Feel uh, free to put it in the chat or unmute yourself. I got a question. Can you hear me? Yep. Go ahead, Sharon. Thank um, you. For Hyde Park with those uh, repair cafes, they have been very special. So, anything more you can tell us about that would be helpful. Um, we haven't participated in one yet. We were going to, I, I believe we were going to work with the town of Pleasant Valley this year uh, to, to help with theirs and then go further to see if we wanted our own. Oh, oh, that's right, right. It was Rhinebeck that was doing it. Rhinebeck or Red Hook, maybe? Maybe. Yeah. Somebody's got to do it. Maybe that's a coordination issue. Well, it, yeah, it sounds like a couple communities are coming together to try to figure it out. Uh, this year. So maybe Pleasant Valley can share a little bit about, more about that um, when they present tonight too. Um, there is a question, uh, Carrie, about what is a bike rodeo? Um, maybe Richard might be better um, to answer this question. Um, I'm not 100% on it, so. Well, Carrie, your, your little one's only two years old. It's not quite ready for even trainer wheels yet, so I don't blame you a bit. Uh, this is a combination of uh, safety training as well as uh, rodeo, uh, concentrating on elementary schools, the police department very heavily involved. Bill Johnson at the county level is an absolute dynamite bike rodeo person. If you don't have any contact with him yet, look for him. He's highly knowledgeable. Uh, so it's a a rodeo to kind of have some fun and that sort of thing, uh, have the kiddos kind of ride around behind the police policemen on their bicycles. Um, but it's uh, largely a safety uh, endeavor. Great. Thank you. And someone put in the chat that the town of LaGrange has had repair cafes, and it just so happens that the town of LaGrange is our next presenter. So Mongtu, uh, you, Mongtu will be presenting for the town of LaGrange. All right. Um, Mong, you need to unmute yourself. Mong, if you can hear me, you're still muted. Yeah. 
Can you there hear you me now? Excellent. We can hear okay. you now. Okay. Thank you. The, we reviewed the application of the and Town Planning Board and con commented on the environmental impact and at the monthly meetings on second Mondays of each month, continue to receive strong support from the town board. Joe Luna, town councilman, who is the liaison to CAC, attended all monthly CAC meetings and gave valuable support. So he retired December 31, 2021, after many of distinguished service of town councilmen. We gave him an award as a good part. The, 2021 was a bicentennial year for a town of LaGrange. We're 200 years old. And we collaborated with LaGrange Parks and Recreation Director, Courtney Carroll, to celebrate this birthday. One, we led a guided nature trail walk at Stringham Park on May 18th. Second, sponsored and led a guided tour of Wappinger Creek Greenwood Trail on September 21st. Third, held a demonstration of electric vehicles at Tape su Top Supermarket LaGrange to promote increased use of electric vehicles to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Thanks, handed our environmental literature and demonstrated building of bluebird boxes to more than 1,000 people who attended the Green Bicentennial Weekend on October 30, 23rd and 24th from noon to 5 p.m. I think this is the best way to get your literature out because you can answer questions. You know, it's two way street. Then we work with Town Supervisor Alan Bell to determine town owned properties which might be suitable for potential community solar farm. Then weeded invasive species uh, weeds at the volunteer playground of the town of Grange at Bad State Park. We maintain Wapenshire Greenway Trail throughout the year by restocking the map, trimming back down bushes, checking and having falling trees removed by Park Rookie Department, checking on the Boy Scout Bridge to assure that it's functional and then repairing the Boy Scout Bridge. Then I think the next page is the last one. We attended a meeting of the planning board to approval of FEI's a town center project. This was proposed some 10 years ago and it's been re resurrected. The projects consist of two parts, 241 business units on Route 55 and two, 367 residential units. They'll have sidewalks, walking trails, and biking trails to reduce greenhouse gas emission to the environment town of LaGrange. What are our plans for next year? Continue to use of application to receive from town planning board, LaGrange planning board. Participate in LaGrange Day in June and hand out current information in Roman literature uh, if CAC supported service in law. And third, we just finished it, Alan knows that. Organize a Bluebird Nest Box building event for town children at Freedom Park in Pine Street. Pine. When was it, Alan? It was just last week. We just did it last weekend. Depending on the impact of COVID-19 uh, variants that may arise, we will organize and host LaGroix Volunteer Repair Cafe for free repair of any items you bring uh, in the community. So this will be done. We led efforts of Town LaGroix certify the Browns Level Climate Smart Community Carolyn, I'm still not there. I keep saying it every year after year. <laughs> All right. Now, last, I didn't maintain the Wapsie Greenway Trail to make improvements that are necessary. Did I make my time? You did, and you have a minute left. So if folks have questions, I know repair cafes have been on, <laughs> on topic with lots of questions, but can, does anyone wait. have a question for Hmong in the town of LaGrange? No. Feel I'm free to from, unmute yourself or drop. I'm from Burma, so. <laughs> that was amazing, Ron. Four minutes. That's record. Thank you, Carolyn. As you saw, I'm very sorry, terribly coming late. I, I thought it was. Oh, no. Not a problem. Thank All right. You.
Well, thank you, Mong. Um, we're going to move on then to the next group since there's uh, no questions. Um, but if you think about it or if folks want to talk more about repair cafes, we do have that question and answer discussion period at the end. All right, so up next, representing the town of Northeast and the village of Millerton is Kathy Cho. Hi, so the good news is that we are submitting for bronze next week, uh, our Climate Smart bronze, and uh, we're actually resurrecting our CAC. It's been quite dormant for COVID, and Rich Salser is going to be our new chair, and so that's really good news. Um, in 2021, we had a lot of activities. A lot of them were focused around Earth Day, but also in the summer, we did a wetlands weekend, which was a really nice combination of a virtual panel discussion, um, including um, our county's big gurus. Um, and it included a walk on the rail trail um, in the wetlands area. That was that the new walkways that he was talking about, um, the bridges. Uh, so successes, we got clean energies status. We did our high impact actions and that got us a grant, $5,000 grant. So that was a good incentive. Um, and I participated in the local champions program. That was a huge deal for, for our town. Um, and that's what really got us on the path to getting to bronze. Next, uh, Millerton and Northeast are two different municipalities. So in the next year, we wanna get Millerton also certified bronze. But um, the local champions helped me untangle all that stuff. Um, part of that program was an assessment that Cornell did um, that was really useful. Michelle Glock took us through all the actions. And there were a few things that were highlighted that were of particular interest. One was a, a bike map. And we're working with Devin from the county on a bike map, um, sort of as their guinea pigs, as they're um, populating an existing map and making it even more useful. There was a problem for us uh, in 2021 that our highway, garage, our highway garage is a mess. It's gonna fall down um, and construction, we got the construction costs in and because of COVID, the prices were just crazy. So we delayed it. Um, and so that means the poor highway department is gonna be in, a, in their crumbling building for yet another year. Um, and which brings me to another point, we're, we're thinking about some buildings in town. And if we're open to talking to new engineering companies or, or um, architects perhaps, who are really into more green engineering of buildings. So if anybody has good experiences with um, engineers, we would love to hear about that. Um, and that's pretty much it. Excellent. So uh, Kathy, you still have two minutes left. So does anyone have questions for uh, Kathy in the town of Northeast? Feel free to unmute yourself um, or put it in the chat if you're more comfortable with that. All right, well, thank you, Kathy. Appreciate it. Um, next up, we have the town of Pleasant Valley. Um, so Mita, are you presenting for the town of Pleasant Valley? I wasn't sure. There you are, Mita. You are unmuted now. Are you presenting? Um, yes, I am. Excellent. All right, let me get your, your slides are up. Now. There you go. Go ahead and start. Um, uh, okay. okay, so we did, we started out in uh, 2021 with a uh, uh, a focus on plastics, which we didn't know very much about. Uh, and uh, it seemed like um, uh, this was a way to really handle uh, so many different issues. And, um, uh, and then we, um, we had Earth Day, which also had, we had plastic uh, displays 
Uh, I've had to, I had done one on uh, ocean pollution, and uh, and now I think uh, basically the uh, um, uh, plastic. Uh, I'm thinking in terms of all the uh, planet disasters where plastic is is like uh, indispensable. Um, so um, so we moved on. The um, uh, I'll come back to Riddle Park. Uh, the Earth Earth Day we had a lot of uh, we did a lot of composting uh, uh, issues, and we had in Earth Day we had composting in 2021, and we Jean Curley, uh, who's not an official but probably needs to be an official member of the CAC. <laughs> Uh, she and I did the climate steward. I don't know if other people did that in the group, but we, um, uh, and uh, Jean is working on community solar and a repair cafe. Uh, the repair cafe uh, in conjunction with um, uh, Hyde Park, I guess, is um, June 4th. So you can put that on your calendar. Uh, and uh, we had, um, and, and I became particularly interested in native species. So we have several different in initiatives coming up uh, with native species. Uh, Pleasant Valley Days was um, also our bicentennial. Uh, and we had various displays and uh, people were introduced to the idea of repair cafe. Uh, and, and so we get people from different towns and different areas. The, uh, we had a lot of um, library support, library uh, and uh, town board support on all of this. And then I think um, I'll go back to Reddle Park. Uh, Reddle Park is a 29-acre uh, uh, park in Pleasant Valley. And it has had uh, uh, several unbelievable, um, unbelievable plans uh, for a perfectly wonderful uh, passive place for passive uh, in, uh, uh, recreation and uh, uh, native plants. And it also has a wetland. It has a, a, a big uh, decline, which makes it a, a, a viewpoint, really, for the town. And so we that's become a major uh, project now, which, um, uh, which has become a community project as well uh, be, when um, Fred uh, uh, Rettle um, uh, died. So now it's memorial. But it's a wonderful opportunity to talk about native plants, uh, to talk about carbon sinks, uh, to talk about um, wetland protection. It just opens up all kinds of possibilities for um, uh, information about nature in, in our town. Uh, so we will do that. And then we have um, uh, PV days coming up, which a lot of these things will be featured uh, on uh, on uh, the 23rd on uh, Earth Day. Uh, and anything else? Uh, as we're also cons um, interested in uh, uh, watching the progress of a, a new development, we've had very little uh, development going on in uh, during the pandemic, but it looks like we're going to have a uh, large um, uh, apartment comp uh, uh, place uh, uh, development. So we'll keep an eye on that. That will be an important thing in 22, 2022 and probably 2023 and on into the future. Um, so that's uh, my time. Uh, you are right at time. Uh, okay. Uh, Excellent. Thank you, Mita. Um, if you have questions for Mita or the town of Pleasant Valley, uh, again, we'll uh, have time at the end. To
to get to that. Oh, okay. Um, We're also involved in the CAPI project. Oh, fantastic. As well. All right. Next up, no we is. have Susan from the town of Poughkeepsie. Hi. Uh, hi, Susan. Let me get your slides up for you. There you go. Thank you. Go ahead and take it Thank away. Thank you, Carolyn. Hi, everybody. I'm Susan. I am a member of the Town of Poughkeepsie CAC and also the chair of the Climate Smart Task Force. I just I see so many people here that I know now, so I'm, I'm really pleased about that. Um, the Town of Poughkeepsie has had a very big year despite COVID. We completed our natural resources inventory and the resulting open space plan is now being finished and is going to go to our town board, hopefully in May or June, hopefully for adoption. This was a very long, complex effort by a very determined and small group of people. Many of them are here tonight, but I'd like especially to recognize our chair, our CAC chair, Pam Kingsley, for all the work she's done on this front to bring it to fruition. Uh, we're aware that there could be an opportunity to become a CAB after this, so I guess stay tuned on that. Um, we applied for and received a $50,000 grant to do a flood study in New Hamburg where sea level rise is already impacting public and private properties. So we're going to be preparing the RFP for the study and all of the follow up that will be required once an engineering firm is in place. So that's that's coming. We continued, of course, our activities on the pollinator pathway. As many of you know, this effort has, has just mushroomed into a countywide effort. I, I never dreamed what would happen with this when I started it in the town. Uh, we have a lot of other towns involved. Some of these towns, many of you are here, we're already doing this kind of work, but we're not specifically on the pathway. So now we've been able to kind of gather into a local collaboration and learn from each other, which is wonderful. Uh, we were invited to present our, our journey at the recent, I guess it was in the fall, not so recent, Pollinators Forum here at Cornell. And so for next steps in the town, we're hoping to do pollinator plantings in our own parks, hopefully a park in each of the town wards, maybe some other municipal sites, and to get out into the retail nurseries to promote educational materials about the pathway. Um, and that whole thing, you know, as many of you know, has been my project. So I, I want to work towards some kind of steering committee with reps from the towns that are involved. But we just there's so much on the plate, but we, we will get there. Uh, we held a monthly speaker series on Zoom in the past year with several topics relating to environment and climate, home co composting, home energy use, recycling, pollinators. Of course, there were many Cornell staff who presented for us, and we appreciate that. We do have those recordings available uh, for public watching if anyone's interested. We are planning an Earth Day cleanup next month and hoping to plan a bio blitz event in the fall. Uh, many of our CAC actions, of course, intersect with Climate Smart, and I'm very delighted to report that we did achieve bronze certification in September. Thanks in large part to Michelle Gluck, who, who guided us for a long time. And we are in the process of a lot more actions towards silver. One of those is Duchess Cappy. So many of us are going to be there. We're, you know, we're waiting for that to start. And in parallel, some of those actions also count towards uh, high impact actions for clean energy communities. I'm very excited because we did just finish our Solar for All campaign. And so now we have enough actions to get the grants and we have a lot of ideas about what to do with those. Um, that campaign was for lower income residents, but we did meet our required minimum. And I understand there are many more applications in the pipe pipeline. So I'm thrilled about that. Um, to, in closing, our CAC has identified finding more ways to connect directly with our residents as, as a very high priority for the coming year. We have to work on an overhaul of our page on the town's new website, and we are trying to uh, hopefully bring the town along regarding a social media policy and you know, getting social media for the CAC under that umbrella. Uh, we do have a very, very robust Climate Smart Task Force page and Facebook page. We're trying to use that, you know, for, for both groups. So that's our summary. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. Um, we have like 30 seconds if someone has a real quick question for the town of Poughkeepsie. Um, 
Otherwise, if it's more elaborative, I'll, let's hold it until the end, the more elaborate. Um, but thank you again, Susan, appreciate it. Uh, I have a question. What's Go Bob Blitz Day? What's I'm sorry? Bob Blitz Day? I would rather Pam could address that, would be better. Pam, I know you're here. Bob Blitz Day. A bio um, Blitz Day. It's, um, this is, uh, something that I, I found out about uh, through one of our members, uh, Mary Beth uh, Rubenstein, which is, uh, you know, um, picking a day where you do like an inventory of the natural environment, as, whether it's birds or plants or, you know, something like that. So um, we um, actually got a little bit of a tutorial on that and we're thinking we're we're wondering whether we might be able to pull one of those off in the fall or maybe you know it might be something that we might try in 2023 but it was part of this idea of really trying to intersect more and and get more uh community involvement doing something that was fun thank you ma'am mm -hmm. You, you may already um, know this, but one of our presenters later this evening, Jen Rubo, um, she'll be presenting for the town of Unionville, Unionville but she's also the director of the um, Environmental Barns at Vassar, has experience with uh, doing BioBlitz, so she may be a good resource. For I just volunteered you, Jen. <laughs> All right, up next, the um, town of Red Hook will be presenting, Lori Houston. Okay, on volume. Yep, I can hear you. Let me just get your slides up. All right, there you go. All right. So um, I dance back and forth between my two identities. Um, and Denny Calais is here also from the Energy Committee. And a lot of the CAC stuff and the energy stuff kind of overlaps. Um, and so I'm glad to have him here. Um, I think sort of six things of this list I wanted to highlight, um, like Beacon and others, we're trying out residential composting this year, where residents bring it to the town yard. Um, the, uh, we put in for a CEC grant, uh, a really fun one, working with the community center to get um, electric mowing launched. Um, see what happens with that grant, and it was a nice synergy with a program the community center had already where they hire local students um, to do work. And so we married the two together with our funding request. Um, the highway solar project, um, I know someone else is talking about getting a new highway garage. Um, we are sort of, we have a relatively new highway garage that was missing a few things. So now it's gonna get solar 75 kilowatts I uh, thanks to a grant. Um, and then um, a lot of the excess capacity, because that's a lot, will go to some other town uses, town buildings. There's also a electric vehicle fast charger grant that just came through, which will go in in June, uh, which is nice. Um, we collaborated with the village, um, but theirs, their timing was a little off ours. So we got ours, they didn't get theirs. We hope they get it next round. It would be nice to have it in the village as well. We are trying out something new, um, very hot topic of refrigerants. So we'd like to do a refrigerant recovery program to um, kind of not the sexiest of issues, but it's a very high uh, return on keeping those bad greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. So we'll be able to report out next year how that went. Denny's heavily involved with that and our partners with, um, with Bard College and New Yorkers for Cool Refrigerant Management make that possible. And then I guess in terms of successes, the, um, with the, the critical parts for us were partnerships, uh, working with the library, the community center, again, the energy committee, um, Bard Center for Civic Engagement, also critical for us this year on our planning efforts was the fact that the town was supportive with some extra funding, especially for equitable materials management, which is code for you know doing better at our recycle yard. Um, that's gonna allow us to do an e-waste event and um, do the uh, compost program um, with the idea that we tried and um, 
not charge for the good things we want to have happen, but we do keep, we do charge for the trash. Uh, and then another reason for our success was having a BARD intern who went through that program. Um, someone mentioned with the, the 12 week program um, and is also six hours a week helping out on all this. And it's been phenomenal having her participation with our committee. Um, excellent, an excellent helper. Um, and I should have done challenges first, right? Cause you wanna end on a good note. Um, challenge was, uh, oh, here it's, it's kind of good and bad. One of our members is now a town board member. So that's good, right? Um, and we'll, we'll fill it in. Um, we would love to fill it in and help the high school um, kind of return their environmental energy that kind of faded during COVID and get one of the environmental club members to sit on the CAC with us and make some nice connections um, because we did find that we've kind of lost touch with the school district and they're a big part of our carbon footprint. And so it would be really nice to keep those connections um, and make sure that we share expertise about the pathway forward for our climate action plan, which as Denny knows, we would love to refresh and keep activated. Um, so I guess I'll end 30 seconds early. I know I missed a lot, but that's a, that's some of it. Any quick questions for Lori in the town of Red Hook? All right. Thank you again, Lori. Um, next up, we have Greg Williams, who will present for the town of Stanford. Let me get your slides. Hi. Good evening, everybody. Um, Gregory Williams with the uh, town of Stanford um, CAC. Um, in 2021, uh, we helped to facilitate the town board's adoption of the Climate Smart uh, Community Pledge, um, which is the starting point of our us embarking uh, upon this, this new journey here. And uh, we submitted comments to the town board and Winnicky Land Trust on habitat re restoration at uh, Winnicky Land Trust new two new preserves in Stanford. Um, we also re-engaged with the Wappinger Creek Watershed Inter Municipal Council. Um, continuing this year, as well as um, we try to do this every year, we um, organize the uh, Town of Stanford Roadside Cleanup Day, and um, we also have an information booth at the uh, Community Day here in the Town of Stanford. Um, we, we reviewed the environmental and conservation related aspects of town uh, drafts comprehensive grant plan, which is uh, currently uh, being uh, reviewed. And, uh, you know, we had a, a fair bit to say about um, uh, that implementation there. So, um, so we have joined the um, Climate Smart Communities Program. Um, and uh, we did install a new uh, chairperson, uh, Rosemary uh, Miner, um, who replaced Ann Bernstein. Um, but uh, unfortunately, um, she is, uh, had to um, step down from the position. So we are currently uh, looking for a new, um, new uh, chairperson for our CAC. Um, some of our obstacles this year, uh, maintaining engagement of CAC members. Um, you know, with COVID and, uh, you know, Zoom, it's been a little bit difficult to uh, keep everybody together. And um, a lot of us have some things going on in our lives. So it's been a bit, uh, bit much to uh, keep, keep the meetings going uh, strong, but uh, we do have a lot of engagement, um, a lot of email chains and whatnot. So um, we, we've been trying to keep it together here. Um, so some of our plans for work in 2022, um, we still need to uh, help the town board uh, create a CSC uh, task force and appoint a CSC coordinator. Um, it's going to be very important work for 2022 for us. Um, been uh, working with and you know and want to do further work with the uh, Duchess Land Conservancy and the town preserves preserves rather. Um, we have a volunteer event uh, coming up and. Uh, you know, hope to continue these things into the future. Um, we have an, we have a uh, spring seedling planting going on uh, in just a few short more weeks, uh, which we're going to 
um, plant some New York State uh, DEC uh, trees um, that we acquired and um, should be a good event for the town and to uh, spread some uh, spread some good uh, good plants around the uh, or some of our declining watersheds around around here. So um, we have a uh, social media page that we've been increasing in presence on. I'll post it up in the chat. There you go. And um, we had a welcome packet a bunch of years ago. We made one up, but uh, it needs a fair amount of updating. So that's going to be the topic for our next few meetings to try to get that uh, get that going. So um, that's all I have. Uh, and uh, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Great. There is still um, about a minute and a half left. So does anyone have questions for the town of Stanford? All right. Well, if you think of some, please feel free to add them to the chat or hold them until the end. Thank you, Greg. And um, next up, we have Jen Rubo from the Town of Unionville presenting. Okay. Um, thank you, Carolyn. Um, my name is Jen Rubo. I'm the chair of the CAC in the Town of Unionville. Um, I, I recently became chair after Aki Bush stepped down um, at the beginning of the year. But um, probably most notable um, of our projects completed this year was our natural resources inventory, which Aki took a, um, a huge role in. So um, she gets a lot of credit for, for getting that completed. Um, we also um, started, kind of restarted our Climate Smart community work um, by developing a task force. Um, um, which is how I actually got involved in the CAC. So our CAC and our Climate Smart Community Task Force are, um, are overlap. We have some, some of the same members on both. Um, and I was lucky enough to participate in the Local Champions Program as well, um, which was um, a really wonderful experience. And I'd be happy to talk, talk to anyone about that who might be interested for this year. Um, so, we are, um, some of our other accomplishments from this year were, um, we, ha we held a, a series of events called Food for Thought, which were at our um, town park, which is Timor Park, um, which um, we had, we would have a food truck come and have a speaker present. Um, and those were pretty successful. We held one about pollinators pa pollinator pathways um, with Chet Kerr, who um, is from that program. Um, we had another one about invasive species, and um, and then um, we have a couple planned for this year. We're going to be doing a stargazing event at our town park as well this year um, with the Mid Hudson Astronomical Association. Um, so um, and then another kind of event we had for the public that was really successful was our Trees for Time War event, which um, was. Um, initiated by a local Girl Scout, um, and she, um, the goal was to, to replant the same number of trees that the town took down this year, um, and so we planted, it was a little over 100 trees on our town property, um, and that was funded by donations from um, local residents, um, but we did get the trees at a discount from Soil and Water, um, so Brian Skorlick was a big help with that. Um, and then we also had our town solar array come online and we were able to receive a grant from the NYSERDA CEC program. Um, and with that grant, we're hoping to, we're gonna be installing a composting toilet at our town park. So um, that's exciting. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Um, I think, like I said, our big, one of our big, biggest successes was the NRI, um, which is hopefully gonna help to inform we're looking into creating an open space plan as well as conservation overlays as part of our zoning. And um, some of our goals for this coming year are to submit for bronze certification with the help from Michelle Gluck. Um, we're starting the process of working on that now. And um, we're gonna be, like I mentioned, open, um, the open space plan. Um, and we're also looking to try to plant a pollinator meadow around our solar array, which is um, 
become more challenging um, than I expected, um, mostly because um, the solar company doesn't want us to necessarily plant within in between the solar panels. Um, so we're trying to kind of make a compromise and do a planting around the border and then an adjacent um, lot, the empty lot next to the solar array, but it's super expensive. And um, in order to do it right, you know, we it really needs, um, it, it needs a lot of maintenance and um, it needs the maintenance, especially with invasive species and all of that. So, um, so we're exploring funding right now to see if we can get that done and kind of thinking creatively about how we could, we could do that. Um, and then the other kind of thing that we've been thinking about a lot, and this goes back to our open space plan and also the conservation overlays, is how most of, we discovered through our NRI that about 70% of our town is forested, and we have some very large tracts of forested area. Um, and so, and those are all mostly owned by private landowners, namely some of the hunt, club, hunt clubs here in Unionvale. And so um, we're trying to think about how do we engage those landowners to help conserve those, those forested areas, which are so important, um, especially um, in, the, in the whole climate change arena. Um, so um, I think that's about it. Oh, I did want to just mention to, P about the, um, the, the Fishkill Creek watershed um, group that I will mention that to our CAC and see if anyone's interested in, in getting involved in that again, we, since we're the headwaters there. Um, and, um, oh, and we're also gonna be involved in the CAPI program whenever that starts, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna uh, start very soon. Okay, cool, <laughs> great. <laughs> Thank you, it. Jen. Yep. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, we are out of time to take questions for right now, but um, we will be at the discussion portion of our agenda very soon. So hold those questions if you have any for Jen. Um, but our last community to present this evening, but certainly not least, uh, is the town of Washington. And Howard Chu will be presenting. Howard. Yes. Uh, give me a moment. Um, OK. Your slide is ready for you. All right, ready to go. Uh, it's interesting being the last person on the group. I get to see all the stuff everybody else is doing and there's some similarities, uh, thank goodness. And uh, of course, a lot of new stuff that you know we could think about. And one of the things you were interested in in your letter was you know, the how our board is made up. Okay, first of all, we David Greenwood has been our chair for a very long time and in spite of Everybody saying don't retire as chair, he did it anyway, but he did stay on the CAC. So we get his advice still, and he's also the town historian. So that, that's also a plus, and we'll, uh, if time permits, I'll talk about that as well at the end, because we, we have another issue there. Uh, Margaret Schneibel is the new chair, and she uh, hit the ground running because there's a lot of stuff going on as with everybody else. Uh, unfortunately, she's away at the moment. She wasn't sure of her internet connection. So you have to put up with me for another year. <laughs> All right, now we have eight members at the moment. Uh, the, the COVID problem was difficult. Three of our members had various problems associated with COVID and found it difficult to continue uh, in terms of the Zoom and other things. Uh, but the good news is we have five new people. So we're up to eight and these are all very talented people. Um, trying to keep up with all of them, hopefully. <laughs> uh, we also have a li liaison from the town and the village. Uh, so we have a very active CAC. We uh, meet monthly. We haven't missed any monthly meetings in a very long time. Uh, we attend, somebody attends all of the town board, village board, planning board meetings, and we submit advisory reports. Uh, our main interest is to protect the man-made and natural environment of the town. That's what we think our main thing is. We have other things going on too. Uh, last year, we looked at 15 applications that we commented on. And since I was told it was five minutes, I <laughs> go into all 15 of them. Uh, we do have a, well, at the end, a little time, I'll spend uh, a couple of interesting ones. Uh, we have a wetlands law. Uh, we have a... Um, includes wetlands, soils, streams, buffers, ponds, man-made ponds. Uh, we have an aquifer protection overlay zone. Uh, we have um, 
natural environment that we look in. We also look at man-made things like lights and signs and so on. So we uh, have a lot to say at all of the town board meetings and the planning board meetings and the ZBA, because this is where the changes come in. If you're looking locally as to what's happening to your town, this, this is really where a lot of that happens. The town of Washington is very fortunate in that it has a very good natural environment. It, it's one of the few places that hasn't changed much over the last 50 years. And we would like to sort of keep that environment. That, that's one of, I think, the jobs of the CAC to advise on how we maintain this wonderful natural environment that we have here. All right, so now we're working on becoming a climate, spot, climate smart community. <laughs> uh, uh, the town board has approved our recommendations. So we're on our way with that one. Thanks to the, a lot of work by a couple of our members on that. Uh, we hopefully will be coming up soon with a tree ordinance and a noise ordinance. Uh, something that the noise ordinance is one of the few towns that doesn't have one, unfortunately, but this is another one of our projects that we're looking at. Uh, the same thing with a tree ordinance, which would include things like a survey of all the natural trees. We have the forest areas, uh, would involve a lot of GIS work for somebody uh, and coordinate the GIS work with the landowners and with an overlay. So we know who's got what in the town. So that's one of our goals to get done presently. Uh, we're also looking at scenic roads. We have a, one of the things that there's a paving issue on one of our scenic roads. And let me just go a little, I'm seeing the time is running out of me already. Uh, the other, other one that we have is that we have a, a project we're in a um, non-conforming use in a residential area where the neighbors are complaining about noise pollution, air pollution, water pollution, uh, contamination of the aquifers. And we're trying to advise on that. And then we have somebody who is, wants to make a 20 acre pond. So this is going before the DEC and we're in, uh, in bio, advising on the water, the habitat, the loss of trees, streams. So that's keeping us very busy. And then we have a project called Migdale or Janus Farms where somebody is, has a 350 acre piece of property that they want to convert into basically an amusement park sort of with a very high end motel. Uh, think Silo Ridge basically. This has activated a lot of concern among the neighbors and we are involved in advising on that as well. Uh, so we've been very busy. This is what we've been doing. This is our kind of CAC work. All right, I see by my timer, I'm over. <laughs> yes, you. Uh, I just sent you the, the wrap up message. So yeah, <laughs> you are at five minutes. Um, but- Question? Yes, ask okay. questions because now we have plenty of time. We have uh, about 13 minutes left in the evening to ask questions of both Howard and any of the other communities. Oh. Okay, um, the town, the village of Millbrook and your CAC, how do you coordinate that? Okay, maybe I didn't mention it clearly. We have two liaisons. One is from the town board. The other one is from the village board. And he's been a long time member and we coordinate with them on projects, even though we don't have the legal authority to tell them what to do per se, but our, our liaison member does. He's also on the village board. And so we coordinate with that way and they come to our meetings, our town board meetings, and we go to there. So it's a small community. So everything is very tightly integrated. So, so we have a good have, relationship with them. You have one CAC that coordinates with all of those elements. Oh, we're, we're also the village CAC, but we don't get used too much in the village because the village is highly developed. You have so both we, functions. Yeah, we have both. We do, we do advise on sewer and water with them. In fact, we made a map of their watershed, which is in the town, and we, all the village parcels that are in that watershed were listed, and we shared that with the village. So the, the village water supply is all in the town, so we're inter, we interact with them that way, too. Do you function by seniority, or do you have terms of office? Oh, okay. The way that works is we... Uh, have uh, appointments every two years, more or less. Sometimes the village, town gets a little sloppy, so the appointments overlap. Uh, we don't do anything by seniority. It's very democratic. People are involved in different things. Of course, if you've been there longer, uh, you know more about the background, but the new people are involved in, and even going to be more so. Our new chair is very much in favor of getting everybody involved in everything. So. There's no, if you're asking seniority that you can only be on something if you're there long enough, then the answer is no. Thanks. 
Great, we have a question um, in uh, the chat already to the group. Uh, Ellen would be interested in any successful approaches to managing tree cutting on private property, especially the very large trees. Uh, and this is Ellen from the Lagrange CAC. When she looked into it, she found regulation of town owned trees, but none for trees on private land. Does anyone have any um, uh, knowledge or uh, information you can share with Ellen about successful approaches to managing cutting on private property? I know the town of Beekman was working on something, but unfortunately, Cliff couldn't be here um, tonight. So, um, Sergey, it looks like you have something. Uh, Beacon does have uh, an ordinance that passed a couple of years ago that um, requires an owner to get a permit to cut uh, more than a certain amount of trees on private property. Uh, the problem is enforcement. Uh, building department is pretty much one person operation. So unless neighbors uh, report, uh, there's no way to know. And uh, um, so. Ordinance is one thing, but then, yeah, how do you make it actually stick is a much more complicated question. Yeah. Um, do we have Brad, something in the, did I interrupt anybody? Or was, oh, well, Brad has his hand up, so I'm not sure if he's referring back to this particular question about the, tree ordinances. Trees, not something on trees. Right, okay, we one. have a wetlands ordinance, and the wetlands ordinance is very specific about cutting in trees and diameters of trees and so on. We're trying to extend that to the town because, as I said earlier, we're looking at a tree ordinance for the town itself, but it's managed in the wetlands very carefully. You have to be very careful what you cut down in the wetlands under the wetlands law, but unfortunately, the wetlands buffers are not large enough to manage the, a lot of the forests. So there's only some limited knowledge about large trees within the zoning code, but it's easy to get around and we don't have, the answer is no, we don't have that yet, but we're hoping to have that in large tree diameters like I, I think something like uh, eight feet around or less of uh, the buffer area. Uh, I'm trying to get the number in my head, but there's a diameter number. Maybe it's that you can't cut trees on without getting a permission if you're starting a new subdivision, but we don't have any management for all of the large parcel already here. I don't know if that helps anybody or not, but that's, we're not quite there yet. Brad, were you going to add to this? this um, yeah, just, there, there are a lot of different types of ordinances, you know, in, in your more urban areas, you have street tree or, ordinances where they do regulate, you know, the trees that are along the street, anyone who wants to cut them because they're considered in public property. Um, also, you have some ordinances that prohibit clear cutting. And as what Howard was kind of saying, some of them um, prohibit clear cutting as an, a standalone action. I mean, it can be done in conjunction with an approved development plan, but you can't just go and clear cut on speculation. And usually um, those uh, ordinances are often more related to the type of uh, stormwater storm uh, prevention plan that you're going to have to come up with. Um, for that. And the biggest thing I think we've seen of it recently has been the issue with um, some of the solar arrays because um, mm -hmm. they can require a large amount of clearing. Mm -hmm. And so there's been a lot of talk about trying to limit how much of that should be on property that needs to be cleared. It also looks like, um, yeah, Vicki also put in the chat to check with the town of Beekman on their tree ordinance. And Barbara added to the conversation by saying Clinton tried to get a standalone tree law, uh, but the general public in the town did not want to be told what they could do. Um, so there is some, some information is. out there about what communities have been working on related to this. If I could just add, Carolyn, yeah, real quickly, if, if you're yeah. interested in a program for large landowners who are thinking about some type of forestry, the, the state DEC does have a 40A program where if you have more than 50 acres, they can give you a tax deduction. If you come up with a forest management plan, it doesn't mean you have to cut any trees. It just means you have to have a management plan. Great. 
thank you for yeah, that's in that. our wetlands law too that's in, but it doesn't go out to the whole town that's our problem yeah. how did you get that to go out to the whole town well the 480a program is a voluntary program and it's a minimum of 50 acres so you have to own at least 50 acres to even enroll and then it's an involuntary program that you're enrolling with with the state what's the advantage of the landowner of enrolling taxes taxes okay great sergey shared the the beacon ordinance in the chat for anyone interested michelle we can't hear you i don't think you're muted but we can't hear you now oh man maybe use greg's computer <laughs> um do folks have other questions or other topics? Oh, uh, I have, I have Michelle. Oh, okay, go ahead, Juan. The one is, what's the composting pilot plan? Composting pilot plan. Com composting management plans? Yeah. And programs? Is, yeah. Is, is, is any community working on a composting management plan? I, I, I did hear some talking about community yeah, um, composting programs. Was, you know, one town said that was commu uh, community composting plan also the recovering refrigerants. Too. Yes. So, so do you have specific questions about the programs, Mung, or yeah. you just want to hear more about them? Yeah, I just want to know what, what a little more about those. Okay. So the, the communities who are working on, I know Beacon was one of them that mentioned a community composting program, but there were, were a couple. Um, would you share more with Mung about um, what your community's been doing around community composting? Um, if nobody else goes, I can. Um, I talk, I think. So we have a two-part uh, program. We funded 100 backyard beans uh, that are $55 if you buy them from the uh, Dutchess County uh, Department of Solid Waste. Uh, uh, city subsidized them by $45 so people could get 100. And that 100 went out of the door within the first day of us making wow. it available. For reference, the county sold 67 uh, beans at $55 since 2017. So that's one part. And second part is a six months community drop-off program where we have a private caller that we you know, did a, a RFP, received, uh, not RFP, but we received a couple quotes and, uh, and chose one of them uh, from Cortland and they will pick up at uh, three different locations once a week. Uh, we'll have multiple totes where all the residents can come and bring their food scraps. The same truck is also going to be picking up compost in uh, Phillipstown. So we kind of sharing the, uh, the carbon load associated with trucking. And uh, our eventual vision is curbside pickup and potentially in vessel composting uh, in uh, Beacon transfer station. It's expensive it's down the road, but that's why we're doing a pilot. Uh, we're doing a lot of surveys, intake survey to figure out who is taking part, implementation surveys, how it's going, the problems, issues, uh, learning curve, meal planning, introduction to reduce the amount of waste because you're starting to see all your food waste. And then we'll have exit surveys at the very end of the pilot and kind of like final uh, thoughts of people, you know, what they learned what it meant for them, what their views and aspirations are for an extended uh, compost pilot. Thank you. Thank you, Sergey. Um, and with that, I can't believe it. So we're already at time for this evening. It is uh, two minutes to eight. Um, so I just wanted to uh, wrap up with you all in next steps. Um, I think there's some great conversations that are taking place and I have this sense that there's more questions and more conversations that could take place if we had more time. So I would highly encourage you all to start sharing your questions on uh, through the CAC and EMC listserv. You know, if you had a question tonight that we didn't get a chance to get to, or in the next day or two, as you're processing some of what you've learned um, about what the other CACs are working on, that listserv is meant for you all to use. It's, you know, part of its use is as a conduit for us to get information out uh, to you all, but that's not actually the major and the main goal and the reason why that listserv has been set up. Um, and there's a reason why it is restricted to only CACs and EMCs and 
you know, a few of us and a few folks from the county planning um, department. Um, it's so that you can utilize it as a communication tool to, to reach out and engage with each other. So if you have questions from tonight that you didn't get a chance to or new questions that, that come up over the course of the year, um, please utilize that. And if you need help in remembering how to access it or what the, uh, the, um, the um, email kind of addresses for the full list serve, you could always respond to um, and reply to any one of the ones that we send out, but uh, we'd be happy, Michelle, Sean, or I would be happy to, to provide you some assistance in, in getting started and using that more frequently. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, you're welcome. Well, Thank you. Every year. Very useful. Thank you. This was amazing. Um, I just want to remind you that we will be sending out an email um, within probably within the next uh, week or so we like to try to get the, the recording of this uh, put together and up on our website before we send that email out so that we can share it as a link to not only you all, but any of your colleagues who weren't um, able to attend. It will also include the slides from tonight, links, uh, the list of resources. Um, we will also be sharing a draft of the 2022 CAC and EMC directory with you all in that email and giving you about two weeks to let us know if there are any errors or any corrections that need to be made before we finalize um, that document and I'll post it on the website uh, for the year. Um, but thank you, thank you all so much. This is one of my favorite evenings of the entire year. It is so inspiring um, to hear you all and all the amazing work that you're um, uh, been working on over the past year and all your goals for 2022. So thank you for sharing that with us. Um, I hope you all feel inspired too. Um, uh, not only uh, and feel proud of the work that you're doing, but also inspired to connect with others to to brainstorm how uh, you can work together on these uh, these items. So thank you all. Thank you also to my colleagues Michelle and Sean uh, for helping and coordinating this evening and, and really being. Um, uh, and also, it was so cool to just hear how um, much of a resource these two individuals, amazing staff, um, have been to many of your communities over uh, the course of the year. Um, so, so thank you to them and thank you to all of you all for always being willing to, to work with us and interested in, in working with us on these projects. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Um, and we'll hopefully see you all soon. Yes. Thank, thank you, you very much. Oh, and don't forget the great. evaluation. Please fill out the evaluation form. The link is in the chat. <laughs> we'll also email that to you as well. All right. Good night, Good night everyone. Good night. Good night. <laughs>